CPI day. Oh man, so welcome to our CPI live stream. We officially get our January CPI reading and this could set the direction for markets in this live stream in 15 minutes time. We will be covering off the live CPI reading, what it comes in at. Uh, and how that leads the crypto markets and broader markets to react. Let me know in the comments, what are you guys expecting? This is a pivotal point. Right now, we've got the market sat here in a bit of a stalemate. So in the next 10 or so minutes, I'm going to break down exactly uh, what we're expecting. And then we're going to take a look at the actual result in 15 minutes. Okay, smash up likes. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. Let me know in the comments. Where are you guys from? I was thinking about this the other day. Comment which country are you tuning in from? Because I want to know. Here, it's uh, just... Uh, quarter past one in the afternoon. Let me know what time it is, where you are and where you are. Uh, it'll be good to get a feel from uh, of where everybody is at. Right. Let's get straight into expectations. Hopefully a bunch of you have watched my video from yesterday where I broke down the expectations, but let's go through it again. Okay. So what we're looking for here is we are looking for headline inflation year over year to come in at 6.2%. That's your headline figure. Month over month inflation, we're looking to come in at 0.5%. Core inflation, we're looking to come in at 5.5 and month over month, 0.4. So if I was to show you how that's going to look, the release looks something like this. We're going to go through it. We want to make sure that this comes in at, at least 0.5, if not lower. Keep in mind, that's going to be one of the highest readings we've had for a long time. Then we want to make sure that this blue line is 6.2 or lower and the red line 5.5 or lower. Don't worry if you're not following this. We will go through it together uh, and see uh, how the market's going to react. We're going to have the markets open here as well. On the right-hand side, we'll keep the S&P open. On the left-hand side, we'll keep Bitcoin. Uh, and I've got a bit of Bloomberg as well. So let me know if you guys can hear this. With school professor of economics. That payroll just report a couple of Fridays ago this. just shaking up things big time for so many people. It's like you thought one thing and then the market rallied aggressively. You've got that print and it's OK, I need to restart 2023. Where are we? 100%. And then people in the equity market were like, eh, never mind. And actually, San Francisco Fed came out with a report and they were like, Great. Hopefully you guys can hear that. Let me know in the comments if you can't. Bitcoin is now sitting at 21,800. Very important level. If I show you here on this chart, what is the structure we're playing right now? Well, we fell from this ascending broadening wedge. I'm sitting here on the hourly chart. And then we held some support from this level here. There was a little bit of support coming in from this green line and we've bounced off of it twice. So now we're in this falling wedge pattern, uh, this sorry, descending triangle pattern. And we need to monitor which way are we going to break. So positive news and this could just go. It's trying to break now. I mean, if I show you here on the four hourly candles, you can see here that the pattern is trying to break, but it's going to need a good CPI reading to break and start heading back up to the 22.5 level. Otherwise, if we lose this level, guys, you're looking at 20,700 for support. That's going to be very important. That's the bottom of this cluster. I don't think we'll lose that level, but that's famous last words, because if we do lose that level, we do start struggling for support. Because then if you look at it from here, we then start heading down to the 20,000 psychological level and then the bottom of our channel, which is all the way down at 18,700. OK, so really, we need to be holding this structure that we're in right now. We need to turn around somewhere here and start working our way back up. OK, so very important reading today. Lots to play for. And the markets have already priced in the markets. This is important, guys. The markets have already priced in a bad situation, right? This is they're not priced in a good CPI reading. Because if you look at it, we've been falling 8.2 down to 7.7, 7.1, 6.5. Now they're just going 6.2. So they're slowing the rate of the improvement. The market is saying, oh, we're expecting it to be choppy. So we cannot afford to miss this because the markets already put the bearish situation in the market. That's what's been priced in. That's why we've seen some difficulty over the last week or so, because the market is saying, oh, this CPI reading is going to be bad. Now, that's a double-edged sword, because on the one hand, if we miss, it could be quite painful to the downside. But if we beat, if we get 6.3, 6.1, uh, sorry, 6.1, 6 on, on this versus the 6.2 expected, if we get anything lower than 6.2, that's going to be good. The markets can rally because it's not priced in the bullish sentiment. So this is one of those where... We've had CPI readings in the past where we've covered it off, but the bullish scenario has already been priced in. So you get a B, but the market's already expected it to be, right? So it's not just about the number. It's about the number compared to what the market is expecting. Cool. Let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Let's get familiar with you guys here. Let's see who we got watching. Brandon, good to see you. Everything Tennis, good to see you. Brent Green, good to see you. Abadur, good to see you. MJAB, thank you for joining the live. Uh, Pico Rally Team, Amir Salihi, good to see you, buddy. Uh, 
uh, Rhoda, good to see you again. Miranda, Carlos, Nabil, a lot of familiar faces. David and some new ones as well. YouTube millionaire on here as well from Germany. Mark Murphy in the UK. Shawaib from Pakistan. Stu from Gibraltar. Awesome. Carlos reminding us that there's a bunch of Fed speakers today. Absolutely. And obviously the CPI is going to affect what we expect from the Fed. So we're just 10 minutes now away from the CPI reading. Please do smash up the likes, guys, for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Do smash up the likes so more people can see this. We will be looking at how this CPI affects the crypto markets and looking at some of your favorite altcoins as well. We'll do that once we get the CPI release. We'll go switch over to the altcoins to see how are they reacting to the news. Christian from Mongolia. Awesome. Andreas from Germany as well. Tanya from Jersey Channel Islands. Robert from the UK. Mark from Cumbria in the UK as well. And, uh, Asadullah from Pakistan. Sweden in the house as well. Miranda. Uh, Manchester, UK. Greetings from France. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Cool. So let's just now take a look at what the market has priced in. Because ultimately, why do we care about CPI? Because of this, right? Because of the Fed rate monitor tool. Because what if what it ultimately means for the Fed's path in their monetary policy. Now, what have you noticed? If any of you have, been a, have a keen eye and you've been watching my videos over the last couple of days, you will notice something significant here. This was sitting at 95% plus. So what we've now seen is 15% of the market is pricing in a 50 basis point. This is an interesting pivot, right? You've got to remember the last meeting, a lot of the market going into that meeting beforehand was expecting a pause at the last meeting. So, so c consider where we're at right now. Then closer to the meeting, they're like, oh, we're going to get 25 basis points. Now look, now the majority of the market still expects another 25 basis points, but this is creeping up now. 15% of the market is expecting 50 basis points at March 22nd FOMC meeting. Okay, so if we miss on CPI, this percentage will go up. We'll see pain in the markets. More of the market will then be bidding for a 50 basis point. If we beat on CPI, if we get a cooler than expected CPI figure, then we could get more people pricing in not just 25 basis points, but maybe that 15 can rotate down here and actually price in a pause, right? Because if we get really cooled off inflation, then the conversation is going to be, Jerome Powell, you need to pause, mate, because you're going to drive the economy into a recession. So this is the seesaw we're sitting on right now. The backdrop of that if you, is you've got all these company earnings as well, which is adding to the dynamic. Then you want to look at what's going on in May. So what you can see here is this majority of people are expecting 25 basis points at the March meeting. And in the May meeting, they're then expecting another 25 base points. So they're not expecting a pause until at least the June meeting, where you can see 46% are expecting a pause in June after two consecutive 25 basis points. So this is what's to play for. This is why the markets are uh, focused on CPI. A lot of people who are new to crypto are wondering, a lot of you tuning in maybe as well, are wondering what is going on? Why are we watching CPI? What's that got to do with crypto? Well, breaking news, since 2021, this market has been very, very correlated to the equity markets. And the reason for that is crypto rotates risk on and risk off. When risk is rotating on, when people are feeling like they want to put risk in the market and they want to buy Tesla and some growth stocks and some risky plays, they will also buy Bitcoin as part of their risk of their portfolio, particularly institutions. So we need risk to be on. And for that, we need the dollar index to fall to the downside. Now, when the government, when the government is printing, then we cannot expect for risk to remain in that position. Right. So if the government is printing, that is good for cryptocurrencies. When the government is not printing, that is bad for cryptocurrencies. OK, we need to understand that nuance there. Right. Let's pop over to Bloomberg. Let's see what Bloomberg are saying for a second. School, that you give a date or you give a number, but you don't combine the two in terms of a <laughs> forecast. But it's not casting revised. I mean, these revisions are serious. We have great respect for what you're doing, BLS and the rest of it. Now casting complete. Now casting is like betting on the Super Bowl. Well, it's you know, a it's it's a little the bit. The Chiefs, do they have a chance? Yeah, it's a little bit like political polls in the sense that any political poll is a snapshot of the day that people were asked, and it doesn't tell you what they're going to think down the road. We look at the Atlanta Fed GDP now number all the time and that's given the data that they have well in january we don't have any data but they still put out a uh, a now cast so it changes a lot can we have the snapshot of what you'll look for when this number drops in about five minutes what will you look for immediately <laughs> well uh immediately we'll look to see what energy prices did because as steve said that was uh probably something that did drive things up and then housing prices but we'll look for that super core and see uh what what's happening there because that's the thing that's the most important to the 
said, a lot of other categories will go up and down, and we'll see what contributed to it. But overall, let's see uh, what what the Fed wants to see. Let's see what that tells us. Lisa wants Supercore straight away. First number. Where is it? <laughs> I can't take it seriously. Do you think the goalposts have moved? Do you remember, Lisa, yes. when Chairman Powell said there's no yes. space for nuance? Yes. And now all of a sudden there's space for nuance. There's, it's now slicing and dicing to such a degree. You strip out housing, you strip out ser everything but <clears throat> services, you strip out energy, you strip out We did out that food. when everyone said it was transitory. And now people just are like, like cut this yeah, out. looking cut at this. And, and the bottom line is inflation has come down, but it hasn't come down that much. And I think that that's the takeaway. So now the issue is, does the Fed have to be more aggressive in their pushback? I'm looking at year-over-year -year log supercore, and it really tells a story here. I'm sorry, from 0.9% to 6.43%. There's some real, it's dramatic. Equity futures right now up a third of 1% on the S&P. Your inflation report is four minutes and about 13 seconds away. No. With futures up and yields in, down two basis points. CPI data coming up next. Oh, can you guys not hear me? Can you hear me now? Right, got you guys. Sorry. Sorry. I can hear you now. Silence isn't golden. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So what I'm saying is we need to look at inflation because this figure, we don't know exactly whether the inflation uh, will come down because there could be statistical lag effects. There could be base effects. But we do know that longer term, things are starting to come down. We're seeing house prices trend down. We are seeing WTI trend down, although it's kind of been stalling the last few months here. We need to see the next leg down on this. And that's what's going to finally finish off inflation. So the markets are just worried that part of this inflation is just like entrenched. It's stuck. That is not what we want. OK, two minutes before CPI. Hopefully I'm not muted now. Smash up the likes as we wait for this reading. And then we're going to see what does this mean for markets. OK, so we will come over to here on the CPI reading and we will be refreshing to see what does this figure come in at. Very, very interesting. Drop your figures, guys. Drop your figures. Just give me one number versus the head for the headline inflation. 6.2. What are you expecting? So the consensus is 6.2. What are you expecting? Put it in the chat. We've got about 90 seconds or so before the reading. Ian, good to see you. Stu, good to see you. Drop your CPI expectations. Let me know if you're trading as well. Ben says the market can do something pretty rude. Uh, loud and clear, 6.9, 5.8, lots of ranges. Shoeb going for 6. Uh, Nabil going for 6.2 right on the consensus. Wallen saying 6.9, that would be horrific. Muhammad Hafiz saying 5.8, that would really rocket the markets. Ben saying 7.2, that would be Albert Geberton. Uh 5.9s, we've got 6.1, we've got a 6.3, a 6.4. You guys are rattling these in. Smash up the likes as well, guys. Really appreciate you. There's a bunch of you in here, but not enough likes. Let's get a like as I'm refreshing here avidly for you guys to get this CPI reading. We will we'll then switch over uh, to see what the charts are saying. Remember, 6.2 on the headline, 5.5 on the core, and 0.5% on the month on month. If we beat all of those, it'll be a triple beat. If we miss all those, it'll be a triple miss, and the markets will not be happy. As we're sitting right now, let's pull it up here. Let's keep this markets open here on the Bitcoin chart. We're sitting here 
and you're seeing markets fall. Have they got an early release? Let, let me refresh. Let's see what they've seen. Uh, 6.5% guy. Uh, 6.5 was last week. Mine's not refreshed yet. Somebody's definitely got the results already. I've not got it. Let me know if you guys get it before me. They've not shared it on here yet. Bloomberg don't have it either just yet. Come on, CPI, refresh. Not got mine yet. Have you guys got it? Let me know if you got it already. It is half past. The market, there we go. Okay, it's come through. Rose 6.4%. It's a miss, guys. No wonder the markets are falling. Core is 5.5. That's a miss as well. Uh, yeah, that is not great. 0.5. We met the month on month figures, but we've missed, guys. We have missed on the headline 6.4 instead of 6.2. And we've got uh, 5.6 uh, instead of 5.5. So we've missed two. Two ba uh, 20 ba uh, 10 ba uh, 20 basis points on the headline figure. That is not good. Let's open up the PDF, guys. Let's refresh this. It's the January one now. This one we're looking at. 0.5. That is as expected, okay? So the month-on-month -month run rate is as expected. But this is the worry. Six. So you're looking at this one here, 6.4 instead of 6.2. And you're looking at this one, 5.6 there instead of the 5.5. This is not good. Let's switch over to the market, see how the market's responding. And we're getting a big red candle. Do not be surprised now. I'll be switching myself to looking for buying opportunities. We start to fall through the structure. Let's zoom out now because this is where we're at on Bitcoin. So if we, if we go back to the wedge pattern which we were forming... You would expect a breakdown, right? So a lot of people got caught here on this little fake out. Now we need to switch to see, okay, will we break down from this structure? And will we be heading to 20,700? If we do, that is where I'll be looking for some support. There's no support here on the flowerly. We're in a downward trend. On the daily, we are holding our EMA ribbon, but only just. The bottom of the EMA ribbon will come in where the blue line is at 20,700. So that is where I'm looking for this price move to now come to for the bottom of this support. If we lose that, guys, it could get painful because look how quickly we broke from the double bottom pattern. So this gap, if we start filling this to the downside, this leg could be painful. So we need to hold something around this level. Uh, but that CPI is not great news. Let's switch on over to Bloomberg. Let's see what they're saying over there. And the headline number. TK, your take on this one? My take is Bloomberg's got really good immediate parsing of this. And a lot of trends just continue off this. I think what we're going to hear is it's another data point. They're going to need more of it. Let me get up to Fed meetings here. Uh, I, I want to be sure I quote this. March 22, so we get another inflation report look at the before SMB, that guys. meeting. I tend to guys, look at the S&P. S&P is not, it's just moving in pre-market up here. Very interesting. Turned around and said the disinflationary process has started. Mike McKee, does this morning's data support it or contradict it? Uh, it seems to... Bitcoin now turning green. These traders are playing games here. Let's see, let's take a look. This is versus services prices when he was talking about that. And uh, it does look like we had a decline in goods prices to uh, a year-over-year -year rate of 1.4% down from 2.15% in December. So uh, a change there. Service prices continue to go up 7.16% in December. That was 7.05. So uh, we have some goods disinflation. We don't have services disinflation yet. A couple of notes on what has come in. In here in terms of uh, changes, uh, rents uh, at this point up eight tenths. That's the same as in December and uh, owner's equivalent rent yeah. down a tenth to seven tenths. But that's still a high number for uh, housing, well, which is why the Fed wants to take uh, take that out and see what's happening with other aspects of housing. We'll talk to Stephen Stanley about this and Liz Ann Saunders talking about housing matters. And I'm looking at an annualized basis here. And the trend is what our viewers and listeners feel back to October. Mike McKee, 6.9% owner's equivalent rent, 7.1%, 7.5%, and the latest print, unless you want to correct me, is 7.8%. Those are still big numbers, and that's what our that's what we're feeling out there. Yeah, those are still big numbers, but it's the way that uh, the CPI is constructed takes into account rent. Uh, right. For the whole year, so it takes a year for that new, for new rent prices to get into the uh, components, and it's uh, and it we've yeah. seen that um, the most recent numbers, according to other aggregators, are that the rents are coming and, and down. John, the now casting here on the markets is something. It's something else, isn't it? I'm not going to try and explain this. <laughs>
Let's take a look here at some of the details, guys, just to see where is this inflation showing some signs of stickiness. So we can see a few components here in January, year over year climbing. So year, remember, you do have some, some effects as well. So if you look at here, food 10%, 11% on some of these products here, you can see 13% on other food at home. So, okay, fine, food elements, fuel up 27% here year on year, utility 26%. You're now finally starting to see used cars and trucks come down meaningfully down 11.6%. 14% up on your transportation, that's having an effect. Obviously, you could hear Bloomberg speaking about the owner's equivalent rent. That's having an impact as well. Uh, so yeah, look, it is it is what it is, really. I mean, you look at it and you see that the inflation has come in at 6.4. We've notched down slightly. But this is now going to be a slight cause for concern because of the way this gradient on this line now is starting to slow down, right? You can see it was coming down and now it's just flattening off. This will now frighten markets because what's the whole narrative? The whole narrative is we do not want entrenched inflation. You do not want inflation here that's hard to get rid of. So maybe Jerome Powell would just need to put his foot back on the accelerator again, increase those interest rates and flush this out. Let's see if the Fed rate monitor tool has priced anything in yet. Maybe it might be too soon for them, but don't be surprised to see this kind of more people looking towards 50 base points as a solution. I still don't think that's going to be the case. I think Jerome Powell will plug on with the 25 base points. I don't think he's going to necessarily make a knee-jerk reaction. But remember, most of the markets now will be looking at a bad jobs report, looking at the wage growth, looking at the CPI reading, and getting a little bit concerned, guys. 6.4 year on year is still pretty high. Let's face it. It is still pretty high. Let's see how the markets are moving now. Uh, you can see Bitcoin's kind of just stabilized here. 21,700, not taking it too badly at all. Flat on the day. Phantom just doesn't give a damn. Phantom is bouncing from its EMA ribbon here. I don't know what's going on with Phantom. A very positive day today up 4.8%, another 5.4%. When you're seeing all coins like this moving despite macroeconomic headwinds, you know that this means people think this is undervalued. You know that if people are buying things like Polygonmatic, things like Phantom now in this market, when everything else is flat, Avalanche is flat today, guys. Uh, Cardano is flat. You're looking at Algorand, flat. You're looking at Solana up 3%. People are seeing it as a little bit undervalued given what's going on. You're seeing pretty much the broad market flat here today. But certain projects like Render up 6%. Markets are thinking these projects are undervalued. That is why they're bouncing off the EMA ribbon. They're going against a trend. How long they can go for against a trend is unknown. But it gives you a clue that people are trying to load their bags on these projects because they don't want to miss out on the next bull run. Let's see how you guys are feeling about this CPI. Let's see how you guys reacted to the news. Piano Guy says, roller coaster. Wallen says, maybe we reach that sweet apathy. Ben says, don't fall for it. Uh, Verdam says, it's always the same. I know the markets feel like this, guys. It literally does feel like this. Uh, Alex says, why is crypto fine? Well, the market's priced in this situation. I'm surprised, actually, that it didn't go a little bit red. I would have expected a little bit red. And again, just hold your horses. Maybe it will. I mean, as we're speaking right now, look at this. Bitcoin posting a red. S&P just going crazy. Let the traders do their thing. Always give it a couple of five-minute candles. Let the traders do their thing. And then we'll find out the sentiment of the market. Um, but when you digest it, you've got to understand that the month-on-month -month figure is okay. This figure came in as expected. It's not gray. 0.5% month-over-month is a 6% run rate, right? It's a, it's a, when you annualize that, that's 6% inflation. That is not good. That is our largest figure since 0.5. But the market had priced it in. The red, we, we already at that red leading up to this meeting. The bit the market is having to price in is this bit. Is 6.2 instead of 6.4, uh, 6.4 instead of 6.2 expected. And the core figure, which I'll just refresh for you guys, this was supposed to come in at 5.5, uh, and it came in at 5.6. So they're pricing in that difference as well. Okay, so that's what we need to now see how the market prices that in over the next few hours. Uh, Ian says, no, nah, it's not going to drop below 20K again. Too many people just got good entries for the bull run. Uh, I think it's going to be difficult to break 20,000. If we break 20,000, it'll be pretty, it'll, it'll signal that the bears are alive and kicking. So we don't want to lose that 20K level, but it is possible. Of course it's possible. Let's see. Ian says in two weeks they'll change the numbers they announce whatever they want so they can move the market where they want it moved that's true they always revise these and, and uh, that's the game they play uh, Atla Altab says he's selling at 25.8k Dixie spiked the plummeted uh, then plummeted market is going to dump hard in a few hours watch says Ben Ian says Yavar I think it because so many people just entered the market and feel that they got good decent entries they plan on holding uh, Phantom, Injective Protocol, HBAR, all up 7 to 8%. Neil says no render has nothing to do with that. 
Ian, do you think uh, do you think the market has stopped believing the numbers? I don't think the market disbelieves the numbers per se. I think they, they've got to hang their hat on something, and it is these numbers. I don't think they're going to completely disbelieve it. I think the market's just at peace with where we're at. They kind of said, you know what, we've priced this in. We know where we're at, uh, and we know the disinflation process has started, and we just need to chug along. I think if this reading kind of sits like this for a while, and we can't break the back of, particularly the headline inflation, breaking the back of that 6% and getting down to that kind of 5.9, 5.8 figure, breaking sixes, the market's going to be nervous until that happens, okay? So if you look at it from um, a zoomed out perspective, we have come down significantly from nine to six, right? That's a third reduction, but there's still more work to do to the downside. Yunus says, wait until New York opens. Yep, that's the other thing. We need to wait for the wider markets to open to set some direction. When the volume comes in, you've got to remember New York markets aren't fully awake. So they'll be waking up to this news. They'll be looking at this and deciding on where to place their trades. Um, and if the risk rotates off, then do expect uh, Bitcoin in the markets to struggle. Bitcoin now falling down slightly here on the day, down 0.5% on the day. Uh, we're seeing the S&P uh, just falling slightly as well. Yep, you can see the S&P just giving up some gains here. Crazy candle there, right? That five minute candle was absolutely insane. I mean, if we just drop that down to the minute so you can see what happened in that minute. As soon as the announcement was announced, big red candle, green and green, and then it's just kind of giving it all back up again. This is what traders do, guys. Let the traders do their thing, uh, and then let's see what the market decides on. But you are seeing some movements on certain altcoins, which seem to be in favor right now, right? Phantom, Injective Protocol, the likes of uh, Render has been hugely popular over the last couple of weeks. Uh, you can see the graph up 5% as well, regardless. So it's interesting to see how that's how that's playing out right now. Incidentally, S&P still up 1.1%, QQQ up 1.1%, but you are seeing some red action coming here on the five hourly chart. Let's see if Bloomberg have anything useful to say over here. Including, uh, you know, a whole host of different metrics. So how do you sort of parse out and be this nuanced well, about I, it? Well, I think the key is you said you can strip out stuff and get what you want to get. Uh, the Fed's not trying to get anything. They're trying to get a measure. They're trying to use it as a measure of what inflation is doing. And because housing is such a big part of CPI, it distorts the rest of the price movements. <clears throat> and so if you want to see what's going on there, you kind of take that out and... Uh, it doesn't mean no. <laughs> that inflation is gone, but it means there's progress in things other than housing, which you know is going down. It right. just hasn't worked its way into the system well said. yet. Michael McKee, much more on this, and of course joining John Farrell here in a bit. I believe he'll be on radio with us um, as well. 4.53% in the two-year yield, an elevated two-year yield. Red and green on the screen now. Lisa will tell me when we jump up or down a substantial amount now, here. Now, now, in the next now, now. <laughs> So what I'm expecting here, this, this scenario which played out had a 25% roughly probability of playing out, right? The most likely scenario was 6% to 6.3%. Um, but this, this was a 25% likelihood. So I don't expect the markets are too shocked by it. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the S&P down, you know, kind of three quarters to one and a half percent today. Uh, and then Bitcoin could be down a couple of percent, right? Because Bitcoin could be more volatile than the S&P. That's my, like, kind of, you know, how bad I think it can get today. I don't see it getting... Uh, much worse than that. So if we do get some opportunities, I will be buying the dip uh, because look, at the end of the day, inflation is heading down, albeit not enough. But the worrying thing we need to now understand is what is going on in terms of the month on month because the month on month is showing 0.5, which is obviously 6% annualized. But like I said, the, the figure, the data needs to come in. All the indications, the lead measures. Remember, CPI is looking back, right? CPI looks back and gives you that figure. You've also got the base effects where you're comparing January of this year to January of 2021, which creates the disparity. But when you look at this data and you're looking at the fact that house prices are coming down, other measures are coming down, we should see over the next few months inflation come down. That is why markets are less worried by the actual number, but focused on uh, what's going on in the market. People maybe aren't paying enough attention to is that when inflation comes down, don't be sure interest rates are going to come down as much as people got used to mm -hmm. uh, before 19, uh, 2022. I think the next decade we're going to land at a higher real interest rate than we did before. So it's not just where if the Fed doesn't just have to figure out, you know, how much is inflation. Just so you guys know, the, in terms of the movement, 27% on fuel, gas and utilities we covered off up 26%, transportation 14%, electricity 12%, food at home 11%, food away from home 8%, shelter showing us up 
8%, even though we know these things are coming down, right? We know uh, that it's coming down. Uh, overall CPI obviously up 6.4%, new cars up 58 used cars we saw inflected down 11%. So those are the main movers in the Today, CPI. what's a thing going on here post-pandemic that changes our finance, and particularly as Olivier talks about, changes our debt analysis? Well, I think there are two things. Uh, one is, I think, inflation-adjusted interest rates. Right, let's scrap Bloomberg off for a second. Let's take a look at some more coins. Shout me which all coins you want to look at, guys, and we can spend some time looking at some more coins. Ian says, this is the best crypto channel on all the interwebs, hands down. Appreciate you, buddy. I think that's very kind of you. Just trying to bring what you guys want in terms of content. So let me know what type of stuff you want. Sometimes it's hard to know exactly what you would want whilst also balancing what we need to look at. For example, CPI might not be the most interesting topic or the one which gets the most views, but at the same time, it's important. So I don't just want to be a moon boy that's going to say, this all coin is always going to go to the moon. Um, I'd much rather give you the data that you actually need, even if it means uh, less people engage with the content. So if you are here, please do make as much noise as you can hit the likes each like makes a difference when we're producing this type of content which most people are not doing right they much rather just tell you an altcoin is going to 1000 x from here ian says check hbar yep let's take a hbar we've not been a while since we checked hbar and it's actually been a while since i've dca'd some into it i did buy some going back into like 2020 i was nibbling on this um hbar bit of a rocket uh, rocky day today here on hbar uh, just flat here at the moment, but it was up quite a bit, right? It was sitting here at, at 0.9 cents. And even a couple of days ago, this was pushing on uh, 98 Okay, interesting. Nice. 0.98 it hit on the high of that candle. Very impressive. Um, so if we look at this, well above its EMA ribbon, holding good support, right? Extended from the EMA ribbon. I certainly wouldn't be chasing at those levels, but this is what you need to worry about. And this is the trend on a lot of altcoins, which I want you guys to do. Go to the altcoins you're feeling particularly excited about and just pop it onto the weekly chart and understand where we're at in this trend. This is the major issue. And this is not an issue derived by HBAR or any other altcoin. This is an issue derived by Bitcoin. Because if I show you the exact chart, this is Bitcoin telling you what's happening three weeks into a slight retracement here from the EMA ribbon okay so yes certain altcoins are showing strength and ignoring this but will they eventually follow the path of Bitcoin that's what we need to be careful about uh, let's also check the, check the stock futures I think that's a good idea guys let's check the pre-market here how long before the US pre-market opens someone comment below how long before the US market opens uh, but yeah pre-market slightly up 0.42 Nasdaq 0.4 Dow Jones 0.3 we can also see that here getting a little bit of green action again coming in uh, on the NASDAQ. Let's check the S&P. Same action here, correlated. And Bitcoin's just following it, right? Bitcoin's doing its thing as well, printing another green candle here, trying to work its way back up. A lot of traders, a lot of action going on there. Uh, just be careful not to get burnt with that. Let's take a look at Phantom. You guys are asking for Phantom. Up 5%. Very impressive here from Phantom. Look at when we were showing you the H-bar move. The H-bar move still hadn't cleared its EMA ribbon. But look at Phantom. It's trying to break through its EMA ribbon. It did. Bearish engulfing. And now it's trying to hold. So this is going to be an important candle. If this is a weak weekly candle, a weak weekly candle on Phantom, this downtrend can continue. Right? This can just downtrend and the bears can show strength. Phantom needs to get above these levels and keep working its way above its EMA ribbon. Not going to be easy if Bitcoin's not able to do the same. Bitcoin needs to rotate, break for its weekly EMA ribbon, and all these altcoins will move with it. Like, that's just how it's going to work. But look at this. This is outstanding. If you look at Phantom versus BTC, I mean, it's up incredibly. If you're holding Phantom instead of Bitcoin since the 20th of June last year, and we've been talking about it for a lot longer than that, but just, just there, if you run it all the way to the highs, you'd be 235%. But even if you just held it to now, 171% up versus your Bitcoin. And this is why I always bang that drum about having a balanced portfolio. Yes, it's a, yes, it's, set, it's safe to just be in Bitcoin and you don't get the turbulence of being altcoins. Yes, altcoins are exciting because they move much faster in Bitcoin. But you need to have it balanced. Have the anchors of the portfolio. Have the vegetables, Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. I know it's boring. And then sprinkle your altcoins above. And have discipline around that. Don't let the altcoins get too big part of your portfolio keep them in check and that's the way to build not only you know a pragmatic portfolio but also allow you to sleep at night knowing that okay you know phantom could dump 90 percent, but you're going to be okay that's that's the mindset you want to be in you want to protect your sleep uh what else have we got you guys want to look at uh near protocol you guys are screaming for near protocol been a little while since we looked at 
near protocol. Uh, yeah, look, same thing, guys. Look at this weekly MA ribbon. It's riding it, and it's kind of getting pushed. Now, here's what's interesting about near protocol, and I'm not surprised this happened. Remember when I was making videos about near protocol? I was a little bit concerned that it was slightly overpriced. I was looking at the fully diluted market cap, and I was thinking, ah, this is overpriced. Now, a few things have happened since then. We've since had the likes of Solana deteriorate, right? So there's no one to compete in that realm, really. So that's where other layer ones are doing pretty well, like Phantom, and you'd expect Near Protocol to fill that void. You've also had speculative things like Aptos, which I don't understand how it's commanding such a market cap. But look at Near Protocol. It's not ran into its EMA ribbon. When many other coins, I and mean, you look at Optimism, just gone, right? You look at, um, not that's not a good example. Let's look at uh, the likes of... Uh, even Cardano has, has gone into its EMA ribbon. Near Protocol hasn't even touched it. I mean, you look at Algorand just scraping its EMA ribbon. Matic would have broke through it, I'm assuming. Yep, broke through its weekly EMA ribbon. So that's what you call relative strength, right? Look at Matic on its weekly EMA ribbon. Look at things like Render on its weekly EMA ribbon. And then look at Near Protocol, right? A weaker move. So people are just a little bit more reluctant to top up Near Protocol right now, which could present some more sensible prices to be buying in at. And that's what I'm looking at. It's all risk to reward. I love the tech of Near Protocol, but the price has to be good, right? You can like a chocolate bar, but if someone's charging you $100 for it, how much do you really like that chocolate bar, right? It's still a tasty chocolate bar, but I can get one for a dollar, right? Uh, Vicky wants to look at, let's take a look at uh, Atom, Cosmos. Let's take a look at Cosmos Atom. See, this one did a much better move here. And again, this is due to the narrative of the interoperability. You can see it connecting its lows here, trying to keep a little bit of an uptrend going here uh, on Cosmos Atom. Again, just waiting for the rest of the market. A lot of pullback happening over this last two weeks, primarily due to Bitcoin saying, just chill out. Bitcoin just trying uh, to consolidate a little bit. But that's the key. Bitcoin needs to turn around. Bitcoin cannot just let the bears give up all the hard work and drive it down. I do not want to see Bitcoin just be like, you know what, forget it, I'm going to drive all the way back down. No, build a higher low and work your way out of this mess. Turn around, right? Turn around, ideally before 420, even if you want to turn around in the 19s, that's fine, but turn around and get yourself back up there with a higher high. Very important. Uh, Verdam says, all my orders did a four to eight X in this little relief rally. It seems I'm extremely lucky with the coins that I picked. Not lucky, mate. Skill, give yourself credit where it's due. Try to understand what it was that helped you pick the right coins and double down on them. Even when you've done a six to eight X on some of your favorite coins, there could still be mistakes you've made, right? I made a YouTube short about that. Like just because you got a trade right or you did well, doesn't mean you did the right thing. You can get lucky too, right? The whole point of this channel is we don't want to be lucky. We want to be predictably finding good projects, investing in them so we can do it for 10, 15, 20 years. You don't plan on going anywhere, do you? Crypto is only just getting started. So it's not about just getting lucky and making a quick 5x. No, let's do it repeatedly. Why not figure out the formula so you can do a 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 20x whenever you want. So, you know, go through that, write your mistakes, write down what you did well and try to do it again. And let me know how you get on, Verdam. Clause, let's wait for alts to go into their day EMA ribbon to buy the dip. Okay, good question. That's what I like to do. So if I'm buying a coin, so let's use Matic as an example, right? This is a coin that's been running and people have been finding it hard to catch. Would I have been buying all the way up here at 135? Absolutely not. Am I more likely to buy on this candlestick when it's fallen to 113? Absolutely yes. And if you look at the difference, that bottom of that wick candle there is a 16% move on crypto. So in the matter of waiting four to five days here for your entry, being a little bit patient, I know it's not easy when people are FOMOing, right? You've just had a big move on Matic here, 80%, and everybody's super excited. It's easy to buy them because everybody's telling you Matic is a great project. Everyone's making YouTube videos about it. Your friend's talking about it. No, wait for the pullback. Buy from positions of strength. Buy in your EMA ribbon. That's why I love this EMA ribbon. And again, if you guys want to know how to get this set up, ejars.uk forward slash TA. Now, by the way, I'm just brainstorming a one-on-one -on -one mentorship concept. So I'm still brainstorming this. I'm going to flesh it all out. But if you're interested, message me in the Discord. This is for serious people. You're going to need a little bit of capital. It's not going to be free. You're going to need to dedicate your time. This is not for everybody. There's free content out there that I've shared with you. And 99% of my content is free. But for that 1%, those people just need a little bit more of a hand who's serious about crypto, are willing to pay some money and get that mentorship from my time I will be dedicating. It'll be a nine to 10 week intensive course 
where we go through what are you good at, what are you bad at, and then improve on them. Are you weak at tokenomics? Are you weak at macroeconomics? Are you weak at technical analysis? Do you FOMO? Is it psychology? Do you not know how to build a portfolio? Do you not know which are the key narratives? We'll be working on that together to deliver uh, crypto education to you uh, in a one-on-one -on -one format. So if you're interested, I'm only taking five to 10 people on this max. I just don't have the time for it. Five to 10, but I want to do it as a proof of concept. So if you want to be one of those, message me uh, in the Discord or tweet me, hit me up in Telegram. Uh, you guys know how to find me. Cool. Can you look at uh, CISO, you go jazz, keep it coming. Can you look at, oh wait, uh, can you look, where's it gone? Cadena, right, Cadena. Let's take a look at Cadena. Right, Cadena, flat on the day today. Daily EMA ribbon, lost its daily EMA ribbon. Again, what a nice time to buy, right? Much better than buying at 140 if you're buying down here at one a dollar flat, right? That's This is what you need to practice. Don't, every, it's easy to buy here. Everybody can buy here. Few can buy here because suddenly the whole opinion of everything has changed. But what you're hoping for is this. Turn around and off you go, right? It needs to create a higher low and go post a higher high and break through 144. That's going to be important for Cadena. That's what we need to see there on Cadena. Let's take a look at BNB as well, actually, because obviously given the BUSD FUD yesterday, uh, BNB dropped like a tank yesterday, expectedly down 6% almost, just flat today, trying to recover. Obviously, the CPI news is not going to help them as well. Again, if you're bullish on a project like BNB, Ask yourself, do you believe in it? What do you think is going on? I've shared my views on it. I'm a little bit concerned about the Binance PEG tokens. Uh, so make sure you watch my video yesterday on the BUSD drama and what I think is going on there. Uh, I've tweeted about it as well. Verdam says, I think they will do well in the future. I think they will do well, but it doesn't mean just because a project's going to do well, it doesn't mean that it's a great investment for me, right? It's good. Portfolios are very unique. It's like if you're building a football team and you need a left winger, Right? It doesn't matter that there's a really good left wing, a right winger. You need a left winger. Right? It doesn't make a difference to you what that winger's doing. So another team can buy that person. So it depends on your portfolio. What return are you trying to get to? Do you think it's undervalued or overvalued? And what time horizon are you holding it for? Digital D says AI is still pumping hard. Let me know if you guys want me to do an AI video. I know there's been literally every single crypto YouTuber has done an AI video, which is why I haven't like, because they're just they're just FOMOing in on the, in the AI project. Let me know if you want me to do an AI project. Or in fact, let me know if you want me to do a, a, a video along the lines of, you know, these are the AI projects to avoid or these projects, you know, because I can expose a lot of these projects. They're not actually AI. So let me know if you want to know that as well. Because a lot of people FOMOing in on projects and they're really not AI. They're just using the name of AI to, to get a pump. Uh, Ian says, Jars, what's going on with Koti? The Jed bounce was very underwhelming and stablecoin regulation is coming. I'm getting nervous or impatient. Yeah, I'm a little bit... Uh, well, we've got to understand that there is buy the rumor, sell the news, right? Jed, Jed uh, was one of the worst kept secrets for Koti. So it was already priced in. So a lot of people saying, oh, what was going on? You had a run up. It was buy the rumor, sell the news, right? It just People just dumped it back in. So it needs to consolidate now and then get ready for its next run. More importantly, if you're holding this for the long term, the fact that they're working on these things are good. The fact that what happened yesterday uh, in terms of BUSD and if US wants to go after USDC at Circle as well, that's also positive for a decentralized stablecoin, right? So I don't think it's a bad narrative to be in something which has a good decentralized stablecoin, which also includes FUSD, right? The over collateralized phantom stablecoin as well. So don't be surprised to see more projects trying to get themselves set up with decentralized stable coins. Can you check Rune? Yes, I can. Where is Rune? Why do I not have it up? How rude of me. How rune of me. Let's check Rune. Oh, I do have it up. I just can't find it. Let's put it at the bottom. There you go. Okay, so Rune's now trying to fight for its daily EMA ribbon, as you can see. Uh, showing a little bit of weakness there. Let's check on the weekly. Yeah, you can see it's just getting rejected by the EMA ribbon. It's a very precarious time. Like This certainly wouldn't be a time I'm aping into any positions, because if you just look at the macro structure of what's going on here, everything is getting rejected by its EMA ribbon, and this would signify tough times to be entering the market. A far better time for me to enter the market is to look for a reversal pattern. 
right? Do we get a bullish engulfing candle? Do we form some sort of a double bottom pattern? Do we form an inverse head and shoulders pattern? If you don't know what all these are, ijaz.uk forward slash TA, there's a full section on just reversal patterns, right? So that's what my eye is looking for now. Do we give any clues, whether it's on the daily or the four hourly chart, that we're forming some sort of reversal pattern that can get us out from that weekly slunch that we're in because the bears are now stepping up we had our we had our six weeks of fun uh, to start 2023 and now the bears are saying okay let's see what you've got and it's all being led by bitcoin every old coin we've just looked at today is all looking at all looking the same right they're all running into their weekly ma ribbon they're at different phases but ultimately the bears are having their moment the question is how many weeks are the bears going to have their moment for can they push out another week or two and then can the bull step back in to change the trend back to the upside. That's going to be the key. We've exhausted this leg. I mean, look at the RSI. If we come to the daily chart, you'll see it even more. Once we had our move here on Bitcoin, look how exhausted RSI was by the time we had this move, right? We stayed up at this level for ages. It had to reset. Now the question is, will the bears be able to push us all the way down into oversold territory or will the bull step up in sooner and just start continuing its move? That's what we need to look for. Jay Cassis, thank you for covering Koti. Welcome. Sony says, yes, I would like your perspective on AI. Ian says, the tokenomics on most of the AI projects suck. That's true. That's true. A lot of people foaming into AI and they're forgetting the fundamentals of what it entails to invest in a good crypto project. And that's important. By the way, guys, in, with our members on ejars.uk forward slash member, if you want to join, uh, 30 bucks a month, you can cancel at any time. We do three times weekly live streams. So you're getting a lot of access to me to ask questions and do things and know what I'm doing in the market as well. But we built a gaming portfolio. We're going to be doing the same for AI. We'll be doing the same for other plays, which is long-term perspective. This is not to chase FOMO or anything like that. These are projects where we don't know what the clear winner is. So we create a basket of different projects and we're just going to DCA into them. Um, so we discussed that and we worked on that together as a brainstorm in the course members section. Uh, Verdam says, I only hold USDT in terms of stables at the moment, but I really don't know what's better. USDC, USDT, no clue. I've made videos on that. Go search my channel for which stable coin to use. Uh, I'm sure somebody can help you find it if you can't find it and drop it in the chat for you. If not, message me in Discord. I'll dig it out for you. LL J says, am I too late? Yes, yes, yes. You are late, but luckily you can take your finger, you can scroll back and you can watch in times two uh, to catch up with what's going on. But long story short, inflation missed, bad inflation reading. But markets are doing this. Markets in absolute yo-yo, generally slightly down. But look at this on the S&P. I mean, how do, you, how do you explain what is going on there? Um, insane, 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 insane. Cool, guys, we're going to jump off now. Uh, I will probably do another update later on today. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this live stream. If you appreciate this type of stuff, smash up the likes. Don't forget to subscribe as always. Please do hit up the likes on the way out, guys. There are a bunch of you who haven't hit up the likes. We've had a lot of you here in on this live stream, but the vast majority of you, I mean, 90% of you didn't touch that like button. So it makes me emotional. Maybe I'll stop live streaming. Yeah, what can you do? Thanks for watching, guys. Bad CPI reading, but we'll crack on. We'll keep chugging along. If we get some serious corrections in the market, I will be looking for positions to deploy. Um, but we're heading in the right direction, right? Inflation is coming down, albeit very slow, and there's no reason to panic just yet. The, re the time to panic would be if we see inflation really starting to become entrenched and showing that it, we can't lose it, right? It just, it just won't go anywhere. Then it's a different conversation. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.